Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Thunberg, and this is a step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the CDC's catch-up vaccine schedule for your family. I'm going to start with a Google search. I'm going to walk you through every step of the CDC catch-up schedule so you can understand the nuances. And unfortunately, the CDC catch-up schedule website is not very clear. So that's why I am going step-by-step -step because you could lose some of the important information about using the catch-up schedule unless you follow these steps. But again, it's not very clear. It's not very user-friendly. So I want to make sure that you understand exactly how to use this setup for you to make decisions. So go ahead and go to your search browser and put in CDC catch up vaccine schedule. And what you will see probably on the first search is the CDC website itself. And it should say catch up immunization schedule for children and adolescents. Go ahead and click on that. That's the main header. And what you will see is you'll land on the CDC website that says catch up immunization schedule for children and adolescents. If you scroll down, you will see two different charts. One chart are for the younger kids. One chart is for the older kids. You'll know you're on the wrong page because it'll say children age four months through six years on the first chart. And on the second chart, it says children and adolescents age seven through eight. 18 years old. And we're going to go through these charts, each vaccine at a time for those that are included on the required portion of the childhood immunization schedule. I am not going to review those that are optional vaccines, but by the time we're done, you will have a good understanding about how to use this website so you can research those further if that's something that you need to consider for your family. So if we're looking under the chart for children aged four months through six years, you will see hepatitis B is listed first. You scroll over and it says dose two to three and you will see some words underneath that with the next two blocks or blank. And you will see minimum age for the final dose is 24 weeks old. I can tell you that you cannot reduce the number of hepatitis B vaccines. So there will be three total. You do not have to start at birth and you can watch my other videos for that. But three doses will need to be administered. And you can look here to see what interval between each of those doses is required. So for instance, the first dose is given, then there needs to be four weeks of time passed before you can give the second dose. And then before you can go from the second dose to the third dose, there needs to be at least eight weeks from the second dose and 16 weeks from the first dose. So it's going down to the next vaccine that is on the schedule is rotavirus. Again, there's three doses in this vaccine series. There is not a possibility to decrease the number of doses. And again, you can look here to see the minimum dosing interval between each of those three shots. Now we're going to go to the DTaP vaccine, which is diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis. If you go all the way to the right column, you will see the dose four to dose five, and it says a fifth dose is not necessary if the fourth dose was administered at age four years or older and at least six months after the third dose. Now I want you to click on that blue diphtheria tetanus and acellular pertussis vaccine on the left-hand side, and that's going to bring you down on the same website, lower down, where they discuss each vaccine in more detail, and it'll bring you to four drop boxes, routine vaccine, catch-up vaccine, special situations, contraindications, and precautions. Go ahead and click on the catch up vaccination and you will see dose five is not necessary if dose four was administered at age four years or older and at least six months from the third dose. So this is how you can decrease one of the DTaP vaccines if the fourth dose is administered at four years old rather than giving the fourth dose before four years old and then you'd have required to give a fifth dose at four years old. So again, you can decrease this by one by giving the fourth dose at four years old. Go ahead and hit your back arrow so we go back to the chart and now we're on him Hemophilus influenza type B. Scrolling all the way over to the right hand, we see dose three to dose four, and it says this dose only necessary for children aged 12 to 59 months who received three doses before the first birthday. This is where the website is not very clear because we know that starting at 15 months, if you administer the first HIV vaccine at 15 months, that is the only dose that's needed. Four doses are not needed. So go ahead and click on that Hemophilus influenza type B button. Again, you have those same four drop down boxes. We're going to click on the catch up vaccination for HIB vaccination. And you will see on that drop down one dose administered at age 15 months or older, no further doses are needed. So you can review that and see how that might apply to your family. Next vaccine down back on that chart, pneumococcal conjugate going over to the right hand column between dose three to dose four it says eight weeks as final dose. This dose is only necessary for children age 12 through 59 months, regardless of risk. 
and there's some more words there, but we're gonna go ahead. We know that only one dose is needed at 24 months. The site is not very clear. That's why I'm giving you these little hacks. Click on that blue conjugate pneumococcal vaccine. Again, you're gonna have the same four drop downs. Hit catch up vaccine with PCV, and you will see that only one dose is needed for healthy children ages two to four years old who have not completed the full series. So again, only one dose of PCB is needed if the first dose is administered at 24 months. Go ahead and hit that back arrow. We're gonna go down to the next vaccine inactivated polio. Scroll over, we can see dose three to dose four. It says six months minimum age, four years for the final dose. Let's click on the inactivated polio because again, it's not clear here. Get the four same drop downs. click on catch up vaccination. And the wording here is not very clear, but you will see on that second bullet point, adolescent age 16 years known or suspected to be unvaccinated or incompletely vaccinated. Here we can see that there are four doses of polio, but if the third dose is given at four years old, then the series can be stopped. We reduce the vaccine series by one if the third dose is given at four years old. Go ahead and read through that. We're going to hit the back arrow. And now we have measles, mumps, rubella, varicella. Those two are required vaccines to attend school. You cannot decrease the number of vaccines. There is an interval of timing. So if you've delayed your vaccines and you're administering these past the usual time for the routine vaccination at 12 months or 15 months, old, then you would use this chart to tell you what interval needs to happen between the first and the second doses for both MMR and for chickenpox. Rounding out this children age four months through six years, you will see two more vaccines. There's hepatitis A and meningococcal ACWY. These are elective vaccines. I'm not going to cover those because they're not part of the routine immunization schedule that are required to attend school. So now I'm going to drop down to the second chart, the children and adolescents age seven through 18 years old. I'm not going to cover those that are not required. So I'm going to skip the meningococcal ACWY. Here we have the tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. This one's quite unique because for those children who have not received any vaccines, any of the DTaP vaccines, and now they're seven years old, there's some interesting kind of matrixy combinations that you can do here. So we're going to go ahead and click on that blue hyperlink of tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. We're going to have the four drop boxes. We're going to look at that catch-up vaccine, and you can see see here different pathways to follow depending whether or not your child received the DTAP vaccine previously or if they're beginning with the T DAP vaccine. And this does matter depending how old the child is when they receive the very first T DAP if they did not receive the D TAP vaccine. So you can go ahead and see there's a difference between seven and nine years old at first receiving the vaccine or 10 to 18 years old. So go ahead and read through that. This one, unfortunately, is a little bit confusing just because of all the nuances and how old you have to be to receive the different vaccines. But again, you won't have to take any of the D TAP, the five D TAP. If you wait until seven years old, then you can give one T DAP with a follow up up after 10 years old. And if they wait all the way till 10 years old without any of the DTAP or TDAP vaccines and 10 the first dose, then that's the only one that they need until they're needed to have a 10-year booster. That rounds out the childhood catch-up schedule. You could see you just kind of have to get your hands dirty. Click on the link. I walk through each one specifically, and then you can see how you can either reduce the number of vaccines that your child needs to receive by using the CDC's own schedule, or you can see how frequently you need to go to the doctor to catch up the vaccine schedule in case you did start late or went very slow. And remember, the between the line reading on this is the older you are, the more your body's organ systems, functional systems work. In this case, we're looking at the immune system. The immune system is much more functional the older they get. So therefore, the body doesn't have to experience as many needle sticks, as many vaccines, because we can do more with less. I like to give the analogy that if I try to teach a seven-year-old geometry, that's going to take multiple passes of geometry for them to conceptualize the concepts. But if I wait until the child is in ninth grade, or 10th grade and then show them geometry, they can get it on the first pass. Similar for our immune system, older they are, the less vaccines they need. And then there's some nuances inside of each of the vaccines, if they're live or if they're attenuated, if they are already dead or if they're a toxoid. So there's some nuances a little bit deeper into that, but that's not important for this. We just follow the schedule and then you can carve out your vaccine schedule for your family and be compliant if that's something that's needed. Thanks.